this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina visiting Parkway Subaru and I'm checking out the all new 2019 Subaru Ascent in the Touring trim level. So the Touring is the top dog, lots of features to show off. So let's go ahead and check it out. This Ascent is sitting on 245, 50 Falcon tires wrapped around 20 inch alloy wheels with a gray accent. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Crimson Red Pearl. And a little bit of a cloudy day, but hopefully you'll, the camera will be able to do some justice on the color. It looks really nice. With no direct sunlight, or not much anyway, it's hard to tell the pearl or any metal flake in it. it looks just like a solid color to me. So looking here in the front, it has the plastic across the bottom as well as around the vehicle. See there around the wheel wells on the side as well. Chrome accents, especially around the grill. And it has a gloss black grill looking nice. And check it out, front camera right here. So you can see what's directly in front of you while you're moving forward. Since this is an all wheel drive vehicle, maybe you're gonna take it on some paths that are not so smooth and you need to see what's in front of you. It also has the eyesight cameras up here on either side of the rear view mirror. And the rear view mirror is very interesting. It's not the normal everyday rear view mirror. We'll, we'll check that out when we get inside. So give you something to look forward to. Now the plastic around here kind of has that carbon fiber style look to it. It's not really carbon fiber, but you can see it has that, has a little bit of a texture to it to make it look better than just regular old plastic. All the, LA, all the lighting here in the front powered by LEDs except for the turn signal. So your headlights are in a projector tube powered by LEDs for your low and your high beams in the same projector. And it has the LED accent around the outside, has a chrome bezels and an LED fog light and a reflector housing. So looking at the profile, you can see all the glass is surrounded by chrome, just like the front grill has a chrome around the outside and the handles are chrome. Also on the top of the side mirrors have a little bit of a metallic accent as well. And then you have chrome here at the very base in that plastic area. And you notice the doors, There's something about the doors down here. I'm gonna explain in just a minute, but check out those wheels. Looking pretty nice, huh? This is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key system. Nice, solid, little bit of weight to it. Nice, solid key. It does have a physical key on the inside, a little latch to take it out is right there. You have the chrome on the ends. Very solid and, and just a solid feeling key. So you have the unlock button, the lock button here. Actually, this is the lock. That's the unlock, sorry about that. And then you have the ability to open up the power lift gate and a panic button. So let's go ahead and push that panic button and listen to the horn. So it's pretty rapid succession of a beepy horn and flashing the lights. As long as you have the key with you, it can be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's within a close proximity to the outside of the door, you can lock the door by placing your finger or hand over the sensor that's indicated by these little lines here. So that's, that'll go ahead and lock the door for you. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle. It senses your hand position. It senses the key on the outside of the door and allow you access to the vehicle. You also have a physical key location here as well. It's easy to get to. So I mentioned something earlier about the doors down here. Now, what I want to point out is the doors go all the way down to the very bottom of the vehicle. So when I open up the door, you see it has that seal there. It goes all the way down. That way, this portion of the door stays relatively clean. It doesn't have road debris like you'd find on the side of a vehicle after a trip or whatever. You can get in and out of the vehicle without getting your clothes dirty. So if this door only came to about halfway, like my car, when I get in with long pants, they get dirty sometimes because I'm not paying attention, I'm in a hurry, and it'll 
brush across that dirt. Now I'm going to a uh, you know important meeting or whatever with dirty pants instantly as soon as I uh, get dressed. So as soon as I get in the vehicle, I'm already dirty. So this is a really, really good idea to have the door go all the way down. It seals all that crap out. And that way, the chances of you getting dirty anyway is less. So that's all, that's a good thing. Okay, so looking at the inside of the passenger side door, mostly black, but it does have the tan and the brown, the Java interior is what it says on the window sticker. Soft touch surfaces here, 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 and then you have your hard touch surfaces at the bottom. And the the, synth, the uh, simulated wood grain looks fantastic. And you have some stitching there. You also have some contrast stitching here on the armrest. And man, are these armrests very soft. I can't even feel the bottom of it. And then you have the perforations here as well, looking all nice. There's your handle. It has a little indentation right here, so that way you can grip the handle, get a good solid firm grip on it. And then you have bottle holders, storage pockets here at the bottom. Harman Kardon sound system. There's one of the speakers. There's the plastic seal plate in the threshold. You know, this is quite wide and protects the threshold pretty good as you're getting in and out of the vehicle. This is more important in the back door, which we'll see in just a minute. So here's the uh, power seat for the passenger. So the power seat goes back and forward and no up and down, and then you tilt here. Now these are leather trimmed, heated and ventilated seats. You see the perforations there in the center portion, and then you have the more smooth texture here on the outside with the contrast stitching. Very comfortable seats. Subaru does a really good job with their seats. And this particular vehicle has the regular touring mats. It also comes with the all-weather rubber mats for the cargo area and all the, seat, the floorboards, which is pretty nice. And check it out. Very, I don't think there's, yeah, very tiny bit of tapering right here, but it is just a wide open leg, leg room up here for sure. Now the dashboard is soft touch, but it's kind of like a rubbery type material. It's very, very high quality feeling. And then you have some stitching here, little storage, quick access storage right in here, which is nice. This is all also soft to the touch. And then you have a locking glove compartment and it's felt lined and quite a good size. And check out that sunroof huge panoramic sunroof. We'll look at that a little bit more detail later on. It looks to me like the back door is actually a little bit bigger than the front door. And it opens up more. So it's almost a 90 degree angle. It's big, giving you plenty of room to get in the vehicle. And it has very similar styling as the front door. All soft touch, all in the, uh, the spots in the front as well. And you have this addition of a more forward cup holder, which is nice. That is real nice. Makes you wanna sit in the back instead of the front. So you can see the, uh, the step here for the third row passengers to get in. We'll check that out in a minute. So you have these bucket seats in the second row and it has the armrest on the door and then you have a center armrest as well which you can lift up out of your way. Back of the seats, the front seats have the pockets on them. But that's not all, there's tons of stuff back here. So you have rear climate control, rear heated seats here for the second row, two USB power port ports which is nice an AC Edison outlet like you'd find in a house, 120 volt. And behind this door, 
some cup holders. They pop out, spring loaded. In addition to the ones in the uh, in the door as well. Just look look how everything flows. Looking nice. Of course, you're not going to be so claustrophobic if sitting in the back seat because you have this massive sunroof above you. Another thing I forgot to mention is it has a shade in the door. So this is removable shade in addition to the privacy glass. So that goes out of the way. So you have different levers here. Um, this one is to access the third row. If you just need to move the seat forward, access the third row, you can do that. Uh, you can also fold it down flat into a cargo mode. So let's go ahead and do the cargo mode first. But before I do that, I want to mention if you have kids or you have somebody that's relatively small, they climb in and they're going between the seats to the third row, they have handles right here. So you can see the handles here. So they can get a good grip and, and get out of the third row and you know situate themselves. This is just a really good idea having handles up there. Okay, so now to the cargo mode. Also, there's so many features, sorry about this. I keep interrupting myself. There's a latch system for the car seats or isofix. Okay, so one and two. Now you have a cargo mode. All right, so this is when you're folding the seats down to add to your cargo space. The second way is lifting this up and it just kind of sandwiches the seat up there. So that way you, you can access the third row. This is where that plastic step comes in handy. Go right on in. And there's your third row seat. It also has the latch system for car seats. You have cup holders over there, little storage cubbies, bag holders and on this side. Lots of cup holders, little storage space, and you have more USB chargers. So even the third row passengers can charge their device, which is nice. Especially on a long trip. I mean, how long is your phone or tablet? The battery might not last the whole trip. And, or maybe you forgot to charge it and you get in the car and you're like, dang, I forgot to charge it. Well, you can charge it because there's lots of USB ports. There's lots of cup holders. It's all kinds of cool stuff with this vehicle as far as the passenger space as well as the driver space, which we'll see that very shortly. Let's go ahead and move this back. It's real easy to do, one-handed. Fuel door is here on the passenger side and it locks with the vehicle. So when the vehicle's locked, it's locked. But right now, it's unlocked. So we can go ahead and open this up. Check it out, there's a fuel cap, little tether, and a place to hang the cap while you're pumping gas. So looking at the back of the vehicle, start here at the top, you see the roof rails in black. You also have massive sunroof up there, black shark fin antenna. Third brake light is right here at the very top of the glass. And then at the base of the glass, you have the rear wiper. A lot of chrome back here as well. Backup camera, for some reason, is offset it's right here why not have it in the middle and then have the, the the push button off to the side i don't know but it's not that offset but just I'm not, i don't get it then you have the parking sensors back here also right up here see if you can see it anyways right up here is a camera so in this glass is a camera can't really see it but that it's in this area right here and the windshield wiper actually wipes that area clean so this is for your re rear view mirror so you have two functions in your rear view mirror and i'll show you that when we get inside you can have a regular mirror or you can have a camera view mirror so that way if you have a whole bunch of people with um huge hairdos and it's getting in your way and you can't see behind you you can flip it to the camera and you can see have a clear shot behind the vehicle it's awesome in addition to your backup camera The tail lights are LED for the most part. Now the turn signals and the reverse lights are standard bulbs. Everything else is LEDs. 
check it out it has the dual exhaust tips back here real exhaust tips i don't know about real dual exhaust but it's real exhaust tips okay you can also get a uh underneath this cover is a tow hitch so it's hidden as well okay so let's go ahead and open this up you can use the key or you can simply push a button under here and it'll lift up there's your button to close it There's a subwoofer here on the right side. Place to put a net pocket, which it actually comes with, and tie downs. There's a little light here on the left side. 12 volt power supply. Bag holder. Okay, so if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, here's your cargo space. And you can actually have a little bit more under here. So you have more cargo space under here. Actually has a shade. So when I fold these seats down, I can add a shade back here. So if I'm just using the second row, not the third row, I can use this whole area for cargo space and have a shade above it, which is nice. And the shade actually goes right there. Okay, so to store the shade, you have it a place to put it right back here. So if you wanna take it with you, you can do that. Now this shade comes out and of course you have storage space around it as well little storage pocket there on the right side under here is some tools and your um your hook under here is your jack and under here is more tools plus the little compartments here and your spare tire is underneath the vehicle This is actually removable, so you can take this out if you want to just have a more vertical storage space, cargo space. You can fold the second row down, the third row down, and have a huge cargo space. Or you can fold down one seat or the other, so I can fold down, have some seats down for extra cargo space and some seats up for passenger space. So I can have a combination of cargo and passenger. So let's go ahead and lower the power lift gate you can simply just push it down if you want to and it'll go down or you can push that button i showed you earlier or you can use the button on the key or there's a button in the front so there's lots of ways to do it uh, some vehicles you try to push it down and you're fighting with the motor this one is simply push it down it's it the vehicle says oh okay they want to lower it it lowers it for you so that's nice as long as you have the key inside the vehicle with you i have it in my pocket it could be in a bag or in the cup holder you just put your foot on the brake hold it Push this button, start it up. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You notice the floor mat hooks in place on these little posts right here. It's your accelerator and brake pedal. Footrest there on the left side. Let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there is a latch, a little bit to the right of center right in here. You just move it to the left, lift up, and the hood's fairly, relatively light for its size and everything, so it must be uh, aluminum. It does require a prop to hold it up. Here's the prop, and it goes right there. Looking under, under the hood, it's insulated for the most part. But you can see this thing sticking down. You're like, what in the world is that thing? I don't, I don't normally see that on vehicles. Well, that is kind of like a scoop to scoop the some fresh cold air. And it scoops it and funnels it into an intercooler right here. So this is actually cooling the air that goes into the engine because it's a turbocharged engine, 2.4 liter turbocharged what's called a boxer engine or horizontally opposed engine. So you notice it's not sticking up very much. It's kind of low down in there. So basically there's two pistons that are facing, two facing that way 
two facing that way at a 90 degree angle facing away from each other, two separate cylinder heads, which separates the heat. That's where all the heat comes from is the cylinder head area. And so it separates the heat, it lowers the engine down so you get a lower center of gravity. And it's also a direct injection 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. And it's paired to a CVT transmission with a simulated eight gear ratios. So you can see the intake here, so that cold air, that cool, well, trying to make it cold, but it's cooler air comes in and it gets split. So you go air going either direction to the cylinder heads. You have two going this way, two going that way, intake. The exhaust is straight out the bottom. So another good thing about this is the heat from the exhaust is getting funneled under the vehicle. So that way as you're driving, it's not accumulating too much here in the engine compartment. It also has a full aluminum engine block. So you can see that not only they have the cylinder heads, but also the aluminum, uh, the engine block itself is aluminum. So this is a little bit lighter and check it out. There's the oil filter right there, easy to get to. It even has a little pan so the oil can drain into that little pan so it doesn't make so much of a mess while you're changing the oil. Battery is easy to get to, it's insulated. Also, your strut towers are braced in to the vehicle. There's a lot of stuff to say, so I'm gonna leave some links in the description to a lot of information about the mechanics of this engine, why a box are so good, um, the transmission, the all, all the all the detailed specs. So if you can deep dive as far as you wanna to go to on the mechanics and the four-wheel drive system, the all-wheel drive system of this vehicle. So I'll leave all the links in the description for those of you that like to get all the super details on the mechanics. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So you have your power windows with the front two automatic, one touch down, one touch up. Now I'm gonna stop it right there because I wanna point out it has the laminated glass here in the front. So it actually has two panes of glass, one on the outside, one on the inside, an acoustic material sandwiched in between to keep the vibrations from sound from making its way into the vehicle. At least that's the idea anyway. So it's one touch up. Side mirrors are adjusted here. There's your door lock controls. Adjust the side mirrors, just pick a side and adjust it with like a little joystick. You have two presets for your power seat. And the power seat is a little bit different. For one thing, it has a manual thigh extender. So that's nice. You push it, pops out, push it back in. And then you have the ability to go up and down, unlike the passenger seat, tilt. You also have a four-way lumbar adjustment as well. To the left of the steering column, there's a little storage pocket right here, which is really nice. Below that, you have your dimmer switch for your interior gauges, your memory height. So you can set the height of the tailgate, the power lift gate, um, to a certain height. So that way it makes the clearance possible in your low garage or something. Here's just to open it up. Traction control off button, default will be on. Here is your blind spot monitor system. You can turn that off if you'd like. Your reset on your trip is up here. And it has a tilt and a telescoping steering column and it's really easy to move around and it locks in place right here. So you unlock it, lock it. Okay, sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. See how the door closes and it contours around and flows well. One thing I want to mention, the blind spot monitor has a little indicator right here so if you don't know where to look it's right in that spot so when that's turned on let's go ahead and turn that see if we can turn it on and off maybe the light there we go the light turns on now so when there's a vehicle in your blind spot or if you're backing out of a parking spot it's the rear cross traffic alert lets you know if vehicles coming from either side so that's where the indicator is so i have the 
seat all the way back, all the way down, just to give you an idea of the leg room possible. I'm six feet tall, and this is probably a little bit too far back for me. You can see it's kind of got plenty of room there, plenty of knee room. So looking at the steering wheel, it's a heated leather wrapped steering wheel. Soft to the touch, very soft actually. A little bit softer than the average steering wheel, I would say. The heated control is right here. Has a little indicator light. These buttons correspond with the screen between the gauges. We'll get to that in just a minute. Cruise control is here on the right side. Now it's the adaptive cruise control. So you can set the, the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you using these buttons here. The lane keep assist is part of this system, which you can turn on or off as well. And in the whole system, you turn on or off there. You set and resume right there. Bluetooth controls are here. Your volume for your radio change your source of your radio and your tracks or your stations or whatever that you may be listening to right here. It also has these paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel. So paddle shifters are typically for changing gears. This one has a CVT transmission. So it has eight simulated gears uh, that you can, you know, typically this is good for downshifting, but you could use them to shift through the gears. Then your front and rear uh, wipers are there on the right side. Turn signal is here on the left side with your headlight controls. You have off, automatic, parking light, and then there's your headlights. Your fog lights are controlled here. Okay, so looking at the gauges, very simple design. It has the, the dials around the outside. It also has a metallic dial around here. Look, it's pretty nice. And it's recessed in there, so that way it's easy to focus on with the white letters popping out of the black background. RPMs there on the left with your engine coolant temperature. On the right is your speedometer with the fuel gauge. Here in the very center is a little screen. You get some more information. Digital speedometers in there as well. You also have the uh, miles per gallon indicator of how well you've been driving lately. And a a little summary, a visual summary of some of the safety features you have activated like adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. You also have a um, forward collision warning system and a, a road departure warning system. Those buttons, I'll show you those very shortly to turn those on or off. Uh, but right there is just kind of a summary. At the very bottom you have your trip and your odometer. And basically it's you can get some more information by using these buttons here. So let's go ahead and cycle through that. So I'm pushing the down button. So you're, this is what will actually show your tire pressure while you're driving. Right now it's not gonna show anything. This is kind of like a timer and how long you've driven. And it goes back to your uh, digital speedometer, which would be my default screen, I would suppose. All right, so there's your start button. So up here is another screen. So this is showing you a clock, outside temperature, a little simulated analog type clock, and a date, which is nice. And what day it is, this is handy. Sometimes you're just going about your life and you look up and you're like, hey, it's Monday already? I thought it was just, I thought yesterday was Monday, you know, that kind of thing. So you can get more information so they're using these buttons here, the up, down. We're gonna go ahead and push those buttons. So right now I'm gonna just go, scroll down so you can see some more information. Gonna go through. So this is pretty neat. It shows your camera system, um, all the different things it's activated. So let's go ahead and push the front camera view so you can see that. I'm pushing this button here in the center so that way you can see directly in front of you. It's a super wide angle view, more facing down. So that way you can get an idea of what's directly in front of you. This isn't a, a screen in which you're driving, which you can view it while you're driving at higher speeds, but it's not going to be a driving view. It's going to be a, hey, let me check and see how close I am to something view. So let's go back out of that. So you can see all the different features it has here visually just kind of a cool visual reference scrolling down this is showing you your articulation and the angle 
in which the vehicle is right now on level ground accelerator how what percent the accelerator is going miles per gallon instant miles per hour uh, average speed and this is resettable to the uh, separate you have a and b trips so you can reset those independently scroll down showing your weather here in wilmington um, the digital compass basically what road we're on um, this is tied to your your navigation so this will help out with navigating whatever your radio is doing uh, this will show your kind of like a drive computer how many miles you can drive what's your average miles per gallon on your trip and then the current real-time miles per gallon at the bottom and it goes back to your clock so let's go back to the view here um, so that's pretty neat you can actually drive a little bit we were driving earlier and you can actually see the screen it looks kind of weird it looks like you're going way fast it looks like you're traveling through space okay so there's your four-way flashers and then you have a really nice touch screen so the touch screen has a um, just a nice clarity and the colors are really well done I mean it's just a really easy on the eye screen you're not squinting or anything like that to, to view it so this is the home screen you see a little home button there that's what shows up when you push it. Um, you have access to your phone, map, my Subaru, which is, um, this is something you'd connect your cell phone to, different media sources, apps, Starlink, your settings, and then you can add more icons if you'd like out of the apps. So let's start here with the map. So you can see, see if we can pinch zoom. Yep, we can pinch zoom here on the map, see where we're at, see where we're going. That kind of thing. You can always push the home button here to go back. And go to apps. You can see all the different apps. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is in there as possibilities. Once you plug into the appropriate phone, it will install those and give you access to those as well. Pandora, Travel Link, these are all good programs as well. It's already in there. So let's push this physical buttons down here. Let's go ahead and push the radio see what the radio looks like you have presets at the bottom you can choose AM FM satellite radio we can push media and there's nothing playing right now but has a CD player right in here and this is a 2019 it has a CD player just want to point that out USB port Bluetooth audio another USB I know this is a uh, auxiliary it just extends to the bottom too to auxiliary it gives you that extra icon there so you can see the physical buttons kind of is in addition to the screen. You can go to different features here. So you have media, radio, you can go to your map and all that stuff as well. Volume, tune through the stations, that's pretty traditional. But right in here, NFC, Near Field Communication Icon. So basically what that means is you can put your cell phone, if you want to pair your cell phone to the system, you just put it right here. This is one way of doing it. You just put it really close to that little icon, and when it gets really close, if your phone has the NFC as well, they will communicate, and, you, and it tells the vehicle and it tells the phone both at the same time that you want to pair these devices. So that way it initiates it for you on both devices. So it's real simple. You just hold it up there, and it's gonna go ahead and initiate the pairing on both devices um, to get you going without having to you know, fumble through the settings or anything like that. Okay, so down here is your climate control. So it's driver, passenger, you also have rear climate control as well that you can control up here. So you just adjust the temperatures, fan speed. You can change where you want the air to blow by pushing this button. You can sync all of them. You can separate them simply by pushing the sync off or you can adjust this one independently and it dis disables the sync. Heated and ventilated seat controls, so you have a three-stage for your ventilation, high, medium, and low, of course, off. Same thing with the heat, high, medium, and low, and then off. Passenger side, the same thing, front and rear defrosters. When you put on your rear defroster, it also turns on your heated side mirrors as well. There's a little storage space under here with a 12-volt power supply. 
and the rubber portion at the bottom to keep your cell phone or whatever in there and keep it from sliding it around or getting scratched. Right here is your auxiliary input and two USB ports. So this is really good for uh, the little covers. I like the fact that they have covers over the ports because sometimes some vehicles just have a have a port there and you know how things get in uh, electrical things your car gets dirty okay and if you get little little pieces of sand or whatever in there it might short out your expensive device so this is a really good way of keeping that port clean until you're ready to use it over here you have a brake hold system and also your x mode so x mode is for a little bit more off-road heavier duty off-road use and then i have a link in the description to give you a little bit more detail on that but um, but basically that's what it's for and then you have your brake hold system so that will keep that way it'll keep your brake held while you're sitting in traffic if that's turned on you stop and it'll keep your it, while the vehicle's in drive it'll keep holding the brake for you until you press the accelerator and then it'll let you go so that way it doesn't you don't have to hold the brake the whole time basically okay so here's your shifter let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can check out the backup camera so the rear cross traffic alert, um, you also have rear automatic braking, which you could turn that on or off. But that is if you're backing up, if it gets cl too close to something, it'll go ahead and stop the vehicle, wouldn't that neat? But then you have the parking sensors back there as well. And if you're getting close to something and you don't want it beeping at you, you can turn that feature off as well. It has the active guidelines, so as I turn the steering wheel, it's gonna turn the lines as well. To give you an idea of an estimated trajectory as I'm backing up then you see a green yellow and red of course red is getting really really close to the vehicle and um, it looks like you're not that close since it's a wide-angle view it is actually getting pretty darn close so um, that's what the colors are for continuing down there's neutral drive and then you have the manual mode there for using your paddle shifters this parking brake is electronic so you lift it up to engage it. It has a little indicator light that it's on. To release it, you put your foot on the brake and push it down. And it, really, it engages and releases the rear wheels. Cup holders that are illuminated. A little bit of illumination in there. It's looking pretty neat. Probably look really neat at nighttime. Go ahead and turn the... Can't see it because I don't have the lights on. There we go. There we go. Isn't that nice? Pretty cool. Armrest, very soft, just like the armrest on the door. Super soft. I can't even feel the bottom of it. Nice. Nice and wide. I think you can share it with your passenger, I suppose. And this lifts up. Has a little tray with a felt lining in the bottom that's removable. And it's a felt lining in here. I wish it was not black. Black, it's kind of hard to see in there, but I mean, it's harder to see with the camera, actually. I'm not, well, with my eyes, I can see a little bit better, but still. Ten, these type of pockets tend to get cluttered up anyway, but when it's black and it's hard to find something, I don't know, if it's a brighter color, I think it'd be better. Then there's these places here for wires to go in and out of the compartment, which is nice, so that way you can put a device in there and close it without pinching the wires. It has an auto dim rear view mirror, two home link controls at the bottom. So one can be your gate, the other one can be your garage door or two garage doors or whatever. It has two of them. Also digital compass. You see it shows you which way the vehicle's facing. It's an auto dim rear view mirror. And it's actually auto dimming right now because I have this shade over the light sensor, um, which is on the back over here so it, it thinks it's dark so it's auto dimming the rear view mirror it also has if you flip this way it has a digital screen so the digital screen shows you that's the the camera i showed you back in the, in the back of the vehicle it gives you a view directly behind the vehicle as if you're looking in the rear view mirror so you can see it's a little bit higher up than the back the backup camera it's also a more linear view not a wide view so let's go ahead and put it in reverse so you can see the difference. So there's the backup camera. So you can see the space between us and the vehicles behind us. 
this camera makes it look like we're on top of the vehicles behind us because the view that it wants to give you is more similar to the view that you would get from looking in the regular rear view mirror. So that way it's easy to get accustomed to that. And also you're focused on distant objects, not up close. When you're in reverse and you're going slow, this is where you want to look at directly behind the vehicle, not going, you know, 60 miles an hour or whatever. So this is really handy to, to get past the view of all the passengers and the seats and the blind spots. It just eliminates all that and gives you a direct view behind the vehicle, which I think is fantastic. I like the way you have the option of both. So if you don't want, there's times in which you may want to use the regular mirror. You simply go like that. Now you have the regular mirror. Pull it up. Now you have the camera. So depending on your needs in the moment, you have both. It's not, you're not stuck with just one. This is great, I think. Okay, so up here, and I like the way this is contoured, push is sticking down a little bit. It makes it easy to push it. And you have your shade, place to put your shades. It has a very lightly soft um, surface back there. Lift it up, drop it there for your conversation mirror. So it's a wide angle view, so you can keep an eye on the Backseat passengers, if they might become backseat drivers. And then that way you click it in place. But having that little bit of an extra bulk right there, I don't know, it just seems like it's easier to, to push it and relock it. I don't know, something about it. So you have some roadside assistance type buttons over here and information buttons. Um, interior lights, you can have them off or have them turn on with the door. You also have, these are tap lights, so you can get some quick reading light. So this is where your road departure warning system and your forward to collision, collision warning systems, you can turn those uh, off there or default will be on. This is for your shade, that's for your sunroof. We'll get to that in just a minute. The visors have mirrors and lights. They also slide out and have this little clip right here. Okay, so it's time to look at this awesome sunroof, the panoramic sunroof here. So here it is. Let's go ahead and push this first button on the right here. You press and hold it for a second, and it moves back the shade. Push this up to get a little bit of airflow. Push it back to get the full experience. Push it back once more to get it further back. Go ahead and push it forward and hold it. It'll go all the way back. The back portion is fixed. Let's go ahead and close it. Now we push and hold it for the shade for a second. It'll go ahead and come forward for us. And you notice it blocks 100% of the light, so it doesn't it doesn't allow any light in. So on a hot day, you just don't want the light to come in. You don't have to have it. You just close the shade. Okay, so let's look at the visibility in the back. So you see there's, of course, pillars everywhere. There's headrests in the way. So this is where the rear view camera system really helps out. Now, of course, just looking behind you this is what you're going to see and you do have very good visibility as far as the windows the headrests kind of line up with the pillars anyway so it's not all that big a deal but you do have plenty of glass to look out of and of course you have the backup camera parking sensors blind spot detection system rear cross traffic alert all kinds of things and of course the camera for your rear view mirror but anyways lots of things to help you out with that anyways so all done. Thank you for watching 2019 Subaru Ascent in the Touring trim level. Tons of features to show off. There's actually going to be tons more information in the description. So look down there in the description, click some links, and you'll see that you can. The sky's the limit on how much information you get on this vehicle. And I'm trying to consolidate all the information in one spot so that way you can visit this video. Not only do you get a good visual tour of the whole thing, but you also get as much information as possible in the description. So that way you don't have to go searching the internet. It'll all be all right here, hopefully. So thank you for watching. Thank you to Parkway Subaru here in Wilmington, North Carolina. I do not work for them, 
but they are a great dealership and they allowed me access to this vehicle. So thank you to them for providing the vehicle and thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.